we are going to now drop a 10 kilogram, um, I don't know, ball, like my balls. We are going to drop my balls towards Earth, 10 kilograms. But we are going to put a game changer in now, namely we are going to drop your mama, the heaviest object in the known universe. Oh! A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. So recently I looked through a bunch of old videos because I wanted to see how they performed over time and I was um, discovering once again my video about the gravitational attraction between two mass points in free space. Meaning, so what was the main result? We noticed that if we place two objects somewhere in space without any other um, masses around, they are going to attract each other and the collision time was what we calculated in this video. And this actually gave me a few first year at university flashbacks. Now you might have heard it uh, uncountably infinitely many times already, but your teacher is always telling you in classical mechanics that it really doesn't matter if you drop this line bottle or this pen right here, okay, with different masses from the same height, they are always going to land on the ground of the earth at the same time, okay? Now, without any air resistance and the like, if you drop them in free space. And they are always telling you, well, we can ignore the masses. But this is not entirely true and this is what we are going to discuss in this video. So let us talk about the reason why they proposed such an idea in the first place at school. So you might all have heard of the gravitational force can be expressed like this. Okay, m times gravitational acceleration and we know by Newton's second law, by the second axiom of Newton, that each and every force can be expressed as mass times acceleration. Now if we equate both sides we have that the mass times an acceleration is nothing but the mass of the objects of the same mass times the gravitational acceleration. Under the condition that the mass is not equal to zero we can cancel it out on both sides leaving us with a very easy differential equation namely that the acceleration so x double dot is hence nothing but the gravitational acceleration. Now you can proceed to um, integrate both sides with respect to t twice and then solve for t and this is going to give you the the total collision time it takes for an object to fall to the <laughs> bottom of the earth. But what we are doing here is only right up to <laughs> a little error, a very tiny little error which can become quite a big error if you deal with very heavy objects and for this video we are going to ignore all the general relativistic um, properties of big very mass rich objects. Okay we are just taking everything into account from a classical perspective. Now to proceed further with what we are going to do, we are going to take a look at the most prestigious um, graduate physics book I could find in my library, namely the Manga Guide to Physics. And it's actually not too shabby, a review about this book is going to come out soon. But if we take a look at a certain page, it's going to tell us that Newton's third axiom is stating that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Meaning, as a little example, if I put this pen on this height, then the earth is going to exert a gravitational force onto this pen, which is going to be something which we are going to calculate pretty soon. But also what Newton's third law is going to tell us is that there is a certain force from this pen which acts on our earth. Meaning, the force that our pen puts onto the earth is the same as the force that is going to be put from the earth onto our pen just with opposite signs. And one other very important law that we are going to use for this video is the so-called universal gravitational law, which is going to tell us that the gravitational attraction between two objects, a certain force can be expressed as the universal gravitational constant, multiplied with the product of the two masses, so the mass of the earth for example, multiplied with the mass of this pen, divided by the distance between the center of masses of the two objects squared. And with those bits of information we can actually get started and calculate the force that the earth puts onto our pen for example. So let us suppose that this pen, just for simplification purposes, weighs one kilogram. That's a very heavy pen. And I'm holding it one meter above the earth's surface for example. Meaning to get ourselves the radius, so the, the distance between the centers of the masses, we're going to take the radius of the earth and let's say for simplification purpose we're going to add one meter to the radius of the earth. 
Also, we got two masses going, one being the one kilogram here and also the mass of the Earth, which you can find on Wikipedia. Very, very rigorous source. And also the universal gravitation, a constant capital G is something that has been found out bunch of hundred years ago, so we're just going to take it for granted. Now, if we calculate all of this, we're going to get this force out on the other side, which might seem kind of familiar because this force is going to equate to 9.81 newtons. Now, please remember that our pen was equal to one kilogram of mass, meaning this right here is nothing but 9.81 newtons per kilogram times one kilogram. Okay, canceling the kilograms out. It's going to give you your force yet again. Now, by Newton's second law, we also know that each and every force can be expressed as mass times acceleration, meaning the masses are going to cancel out on both sides very easily, giving us an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared or newtons per kilogram. This right here is the gravitational acceleration that you are using in school and this is only working because, well, um, yeah, it's, it's close to Earth basically. But there's another side to this whole thing, namely what is the acceleration that the Earth is going to accelerate to the pen because we know that by the universal gravitational law that two objects are always going to attract each other if they have mass in, in some way. So. This thing right here is accelerating towards Earth, but Earth is also going to accelerate towards our pen. Now what we found out in the first place is the force that our pen is experiencing, which was 9.81 Newtons. And we know by the Manka Guide to Calculus that for each and every force there does exist an opposite force with the same magnitude. Meaning this right here is actually equal to negative the force that our Earth is experiencing from our pen. Okay, now each and every force can be expressed as mass times acceleration. So this right here is actually equal to negative mass of the Earth times the acceleration of the Earth. And now we can simply solve for the acceleration of the Earth by dividing both sides by negative mass of the Earth. Both are not equal to zero, leaving us overall with an acceleration being hence nothing but 9.81 Newtons divided by the mass of the Earth, but with a negative sign in front. And we are just looking for the magnitude basically of the acceleration, so take the absolute value on both sides. And then this is going to result in this acceleration. And now you might notice why no one cares about the, the acceleration towards the other objects that fall to Earth, because it's negligible. It's basically zero. No one cares about something that has 0 0.000024 times zeros in there. So yeah, this is the reason why everyone says, okay, only the objects fall to Earth, we can ignore mass, but there's still an acceleration to be precise that our Earth is experiencing towards the objects. But like hinted during the first few minutes of the video, all of this is going to change for heavy objects. And by heavy, I mean very, very, very heavy objects, like edges of the screen heavy objects. Now for simplification purposes and to kind of build a bridge to my old video, you can watch it, link in the description. We are going to suppose that both the Earth, so that thing right here, and also the object we are dropping onto Earth are both point masses, meaning they have no dimension but only mass. And if we go by the proposed conditions, we can actually make use of this spicy little formula that I derived in my gravitational attraction video. This formula involves pi. <laughs> kind of curious, right? And really doesn't matter if we assume those objects to be point masses or if we assume those to be spheres. We can actually just change the initial conditions in the derivation of the formula and we're going to get another formula out which considers um, objects or spheres of a certain radius or just objects in, in general which have a center of mass. So do not fear, I'm going to derive it in a separate video and I'm going to propose the formula at the end of the video. Now let us suppose we are going to drop a few different objects from a height of 100 meters. Meaning the distance between the two objects since they are point masses is, is exactly 100 meters. Now we are going to suppose that we are going to start off by dropping the pen at the beginning. It has a mass of 1 kilogram and by crunching through the numbers we are going to get this number out. Okay, this right here is the time it takes for the two objects, so meaning our point mass Earth and our 1 kilogram pen to collide. Now for comparison purposes, we are going to now drop a 10 kilogram, um, I don't know, ball, like my balls. We are going to drop my balls towards Earth, 10 kilograms. And now after crunching the numbers, we are going to get this out. Oh, um, <laughs> okay. There's not much of a difference to be honest and this just emphasizes on the point that basically um, 
mass is negligible when calculating the collision time between an earth uh, a, an object being dropped to earth basically now let us go a step further and let's say okay we are not dealing with peanuts now we are going to deal with let's say one quintillion kilograms of mass crunching the numbers gives us are you kidding me there is literally nearly no difference here we have so many zeros in front that seriously the collision time is just the same yet again, which is kind of ridiculous if you ask me. But we are going to put a game changer in now, namely we are going to drop your mama, the heaviest object in the known universe. It's going to have the mass basically of, let's say, uh, that's approximately, yeah, okay, let's say she weighs um, 69,420 times 10 to the 27th kilogram. This should be kind of the mass of, I don't know, a very heavy object like a neutron star or whatever. But if we crunch the numbers now, it's going to spit out, uh, hey, that's a difference. That, uh, that makes for a real difference if you ask me. Um, this is cool, right? I mean, if we drop a very, very, very happy object like your mama, it's going to make a real difference when it comes to the collision time. And like stated before, we're not going to take a look at the general relativistic um, effect of very heavy objects on other heavy objects. Just for the sake of argument, we're going to suppose that we can drop your mama onto the earth. And this way, it's going to make a big difference. And now, like proposed before, there's another formula which is going to give you a more real life accurate value of what the collision time actually is. It's this formula right here. Looks kind of ugly, but it's basically just the same formula as before, just with different initial values plugged in. And if you crunch the numbers yet again, you are going to notice that you are going to get basically the same relationship out. The heavier the object, the smaller the time it takes for the two objects to collide. So like your mama on earth versus a pen of one kilogram on earth. And as mentioned before, I'm going to derive this formula in one of the next videos coming out. It's not too hard to derive, it's basically just a remake of the gravitational acceleration video I already created before, just with different initial conditions plugged in and also I'm going to use a better integration technique because I think the integration technique on the last video wasn't too good and it took quite a lot of effort and time to actually get the job done. And this basically concludes today's video and if you did like what you saw today then you are definitely going to love today's sponsor Brilliant who are going to provide you with all things physics, all things STEM in general, all things mathematics over on their website. Brain is an online learning community and app which has nearly 70 interactive courses up their sleeve at the moment and their repertoire of different topics is absolutely stunning to me. I, I mean they are covering such a wide variety of topics over on their website. Really doesn't matter if you are looking for Newtonian mechanics that we discussed today, Lagrangian mechanics, Hamiltonian mechanics, quantum mechanics. Now enough with the mechanics. If you want to take a look at linear algebra, they got you covered. Differential equations, calculus in, in, in general. They have everything over on their website and their course concept is simply brilliant. Brilliant's course concept relies on interactive learning, meaning learning by doing, and they are going to prepare you very nicely for your whole university life. Even if you are still in high school, they are going to give you a nice intuition for all the fundamentals that you are going to need to get better at all the STEM topics that you enjoy the most. And I'm not lying if I tell you here that I really love what they are offering. Just take a look at my live streams. So much fun with you, my subscribers, all the time. And it's just absolutely amazing to me what kind of website they have built up over the years. And they are doing a great service to society because they are spreading knowledge all over the internet and their community is fantastic. Feeding their website with new problems they come up on their own. It's amazing. Their community is absolutely super, <laughs> um, if, if I may say so myself. And yeah, just check it out. The, the Wikipedia articles are also really good and yeah, just overall fantastic experience. And if you want to try it out, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. You are going to get free access to a big portion of print already if you use the link. But more importantly, the first 200 people to actually use the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering the amount of content they already have on their website. And it's getting more and more each and every month and it's pretty good, okay? If you are interested 
in all things STEM, then definitely make sure to check out Brian today. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment channel. Like, if you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those teachers, like, support the channel on Patreon, blah, blah, blah. Now, until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao.